All right, we found some uh, some seriously high stakes data points for this assessment. I really have. So today's deep dive is going to be rapid and ruthless. We want to extract the core operational intelligence from the strategic multi-hazard weather assessment for Northern Eurasia. That's right. We're covering December 3rd through the 12th, 2025. This forecast is high volatility and you really need to know what's coming. Okay, so the key strategic knowledge here is that the regional atmosphere is hitting an, a, an abrupt phase transition. The phase transition. Yeah, we are completely abandoning any moderate maritime influence and you know locking into a potent sustained severe winter regime this is happening by about wednesday december 5th and this isn't just some tough forecast no not at all this is an official alert it almost guarantees major infrastructure disruption we're talking severe logistical delays across the entire zone and we're already starting from a stress position right we're already running hot our sources confirm the cyclogenesis is intense Storm Bjorn is an extremely low pressure system. And crucially, even before this main event hits, the region is already under pressure. And that existing pressure is critical context. As of December 1st, we were tracking what? 236 aggregated weather warnings in Poland alone. Poland alone. So now let's unpack the why. You know, uh, why is this storm system so unusually severe? This isn't just random weather. Right. It's a powerful convergence of two sort of global forces. First, there's the continuation of a weak La Nina event that's steering the tropical forcing. Okay, and the second. And second, we have an unusually early and major stratospheric warming event. So let's stop on that one. This stratospheric warming event, for those unfamiliar, that's essentially a major polar vortex disruption, right? Precisely, a big one. So if the polar vortex usually locks all that cold air up high in the Arctic, what happens when it wobbles this early in December? Well, that synchronicity, you've got La Nina steering the track and the polar vortex unlocking the cold it forces this powerful atmospheric bias. Mm -hmm. A bias toward what exactly? Toward a protracted negative phase of both the Arctic Oscillation, the AO, and the North Atlantic Oscillation, the NAO. And if we connect that to the ground effects, that's the real amplifier here. It's the primary risk amplification mechanism. Yes. So if I'm understanding the AO and AO configuration right, we're essentially dragging the Siberian winter westward. That is the perfect way to phrase it. It allows frigid continental air to just surge deep into Europe. And then it collides with something. It collides violently with extremely high moisture potential, which is being supplied by unusually warm Atlantic and Mediterranean waters. And that collision is what maximizes the storm's severity. It's the whole engine. This event is a textbook climate amplified hazard. Okay, that explains the raw power. Now let's look at the target zones, this huge corridor from Central Europe across Western and Central Russia and down to the Caucasus Mountains. How does the operational risk change across that immense stretch? The risk is really defined by two things, duration and the type of precipitation. If you look at Western and Central Russia, especially east of 25 degrees east, that area faces the highest risk of complete operational paralysis. Paralysis from what? Sustained heavy snowfall and blizzards. Yeah. And they're logged in place by an early Siberian snowpack, which creates this kind of positive feedback loop that just reinforces the deep cold. But the highest priority alert, that was flagged for the Caucasus region. Why there? Ah, yes. That region is the prime candidate for what we call cascading hazards. Cascading hazards. What's fascinating there is the complex topography. It's all about the mountains. You get this powerful orographic lift, which just concentrates all that moisture into extreme precipitation. So it funnels everything into one place. It does. And that rapidly increases the vulnerability to hydrological and geological disasters. So you're thinking floods, landslides, mudslides, yeah. especially with dangerous rain on snow events forecast on top of the existing snowpack. So the impact compounds instantly. Instantly. It's a chain reaction. Okay, let's bring it all home then. The critical linkage for you, the listener, is this. The entire high-risk period is defined by Arctic warming, the PV disruption, and that resulting AO and AO configuration. That's the formula. And all that together forces an energetic, moisture-rich storm track right into deep continental cold air. Exactly. And uh, maybe to provide a final strategic thought, just to connect this forecast to the bigger picture. Go on. Research based on advanced climate models, CMIP6 projections, suggests that windstorm damage historically associated with a 100-year return period. Okay, a once-in-a-century event. Right, that is projected to become damage with a 28-year return period under high-emission scenarios. 
This December 2025 event is a very real-world snapshot of that increasing intensity we have to prepare for long-term.